It's Valentine in the morning. Adam Lambert hanging out in the studio. A little round of applause for this gentleman right here. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I went to your show, the Queen show. Oh, in L.A. here? Oh, my gosh. It was fantastic. Thank you. I had so much fun, and I felt like I might be in a lot of trouble. Why? You retweeted something I put out there. Ah. And you only, like, retweeted, like, two people that entire night, so I was totally honored. Remind right? me. Remind me, okay. please. Basically, 15 minutes of the show, <laughs> I just started filming on Twitter and kept going. I'm like, I'm going to be in Did so you go much live trouble. on Twitter? Yeah, I went live, like Periscope or Twitter, okay, or whatever yeah. it was. And then Adam retweets it. I'm like, oh, it's an amazing <laughs> show. It's fantastic. Everything. I'm like, geez, I just carried like half the show or something, you know? <laughs> that's I'm so like nervous. It. I know. That's what I yeah. thought. It's a federal then I was offense. like, but if he did it. You and 18,000 people on right, your phones. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's like whatever. Exactly. But Adam's okay with it. He retweeted it. So yeah, that's what good. I thought, too. It was, was, it was so well excited. shot, you know? It was, yeah, a it was well shot. Yeah. Right, right. Good cinematography. I felt bad. I was telling Jill and Kevin, there was a couple guys sitting in front of us, and they might have had a couple cocktails or so, you know? As one might. Right. And I'm show, there yeah. with my 11 year old son and my wife, and we're watching him just because he's a massive fan of yours and a massive fan of Queen. Oh, just, like, cool. Loves it. So we're sitting there, and the gentleman in front of me has got his phone up. And he thinks he's filming you on the motorcycle. Yeah. But he's not. He never hit record. <laughs> and we're like, do we tap him on the shoulder and tell him? Do we, what would you have done in that moment if you're sitting behind somebody? Because he's really into it. He's bopping around and everything. I probably would reach over his shoulder and flip it so it was filming him filming me. Oh. So that it would be an okay. awkward, I don't realize I'm filming myself. Right. Filming him. And then he gets all of his reactions. Right. And then okay. I'd post that on Twitter as then well. Then put that yeah. up there. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I could have done something like that, I suppose. <laughs> So how are or you? Or you know, throw a shoe. You know? Throw a shoe. <laughs> yeah. <with the> guy. <laughs> how are you, man? I'm really good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, you've got it's new morning. music? Yeah. It's coming. It's yeah. coming tomorrow. So yeah. before we get to that, what do you get thrown at you on stage now that you said throw a shoe? Flowers. I mean, back in the day, I did have some uh, f like some bras that would get up there at, from time to time. Yeah, yeah you know. Ever like a projectile <laughs> that you wish wasn't? I mean, it's nothing, I'm sure, nothing with ill intentions. Nothing scary. Right. Okay. T-shirts. Gotcha. You I just know, love flowers. the fact that he goes, yeah, you know, I've never had a bra thrown at me in my entire <laughs> life. You should try it. It's really exciting. <laughs> you had a bra thrown at me? I liked it. I was very flattered. Okay. So, I oh, always wonder, you. does the woman come with the bra in her purse, or is she fully taking off the one she's wearing? Who because knows? That's I a good I think she's taking it off. You gotta take it off. You gotta take it off. I gotta take it off, but then you're leaving without a bra on. Yeah, but and you go and you get your bag it. checked at the door, and there's just a bag of bras. This is for him. That's very funny. Back of bras. <laughs> We're really excited about the show. We all have 27 bras with us. Oh, my gosh. All right, so let's talk about the music. How did this come about? We've heard the song. It's very good. Thank you very much. Um, I've actually been, like, keeping this baby to myself for a yeah. while because I was working on music for a long time and went through some business changes and then sure. another business change and then another business change, so I had to hold on to everything. Right. And now it's finally time, and I'm okay. I'm, Beside myself. I'm so excited. So are you, you're excited, obviously, and you've been down this road before. Is there any nerves at this point? Or are you just like, let me just get it out there? I'm just anxious to like have everybody right. hear it finally. Yeah. You know, and, and dance to it. How long is a while when you say you've been sitting on this for a while? Uh, I think I wrote this song like three years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we put some changes into it mm -hmm. maybe last year, but yeah, it's been something I've been holding on to. Yeah, very I would close. think it'd be difficult to, to write something three years later, still be as in love with it as mm -hmm. you were then, you would want to get in there and tinker a bit. Yeah, yeah, a bit. But, I mean, I think that's what's so exciting about this project is mm -hmm. that it wasn't about chasing the sound of the moment or the sound right. of the month, even. Sure. It was okay. more about, like, going back to the music that I love that made me want to be a performer, right. that I heard around the house when I was younger, and then sort of fusing that with, you know, my modern sensibilities, I guess. What did you listen to when you were a kid around the house? What did you hear? Well, I, you know, I was subject to my parents' playlists yeah, you know course. they had my dad had so much vinyl and yeah. he would play it all i mean it was like a lot of 70s rock stuff and my mom had a lot of soul and funk music playing uh -huh. and so the blend of the two and here i am today i guess that's <laughs> how we kind of got colin and the queen because we play a lot of queen around the house and we play billy joel and different acts and stuff and different artists and so he's got my son is 11 he's got this very different take on music than other kids his age because yeah. of that yeah you know I was subjected to Irish folk songs, so my thing is not the same. Lord of the Dance. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of that at I my house. I can see you yeah, in a headband. You. In a, yeah. 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 In a headband. Yeah, it oh, could be, it could be a much. real look for you. Yeah, no, or a Halloween costume. At best, thank you. you know, I'll work something. on that, yeah. Does it ever just become normal to you, the fact that you are touring the country with Queen? 
I know you just finished the tour, but does it ever become real? Well, we have been doing it for a while, so I'm mm-hmm. I'm somewhat used to it now. But it, but I do get on stage from time to time and kind of go, oh my god, I can't believe this. I mean, it is surreal. It, it is the biggest honor. They're amazing. They're amazing no, guys. I had no idea you had a cameo in the movie. Yes. Who are where Blink are? and you might miss me at the truck stop. The oh truck no! Stop. He's on the when he's on the payphone yeah. to his fiance, yeah. and yeah. the trucker comes out of the truck and kind of gives them the look before going into the men's room. That's you. That's me. That's wow. you. Yeah, I'm in disguise. Oh my they put like a like a big facial hair thing and a wig and a trucker hat and. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, okay. it was really fun. It was really was it, fun. Was it neat being on set when they were making that movie and then understanding how much you're part of the you know of Queen right now and everything? Did they? How did they treat you? How did the crew? How did the people treat you? It was cool. Everyone got it, you know, yeah. and it was a, it was a real fun night. Um, it was very cold. We were in yeah. the UK, and we all had like, like hot water bottles and stuff down our our trousers. Oh and my like, gosh! You know, okay. like hand warmers yeah. and things like that. But meeting Rami was great. He's right. such a gentleman. He right. was so warm. He had seen us perform together earlier yeah. that year. So it it was cool. It was great to meet everybody and to be like a teeny tiny little part of it. People tell me regularly. I'm not just saying this, but like the number one. Yes. Person I get told I look like is Rami Malek. People tell me that. Here, I'll take. Do off they my, really? My hat and my. I mean, glasses. I can see it. See if you can see it I can see it. Rami yeah. Oh, here. I can yeah. see it. Yeah. 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 We gotta get a mustache so on you. If you're in touch, if you ever needs like a brother in a movie or something, <laughs> you can yeah, play his brother. Stunt double. Yeah. 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 Did, did put a Freddie mustache Mercury on have you. Have a brother? No, he had a sister. He did. Yes. Okay. Well, I, we're met, on I met. I uh, met like did? a year or two ago, and she was so cool. Oh my gosh. She came to a show, and she brought her son, and she came in afterwards, and. We were having a little cocktail after the show, oh and she gosh. was just telling me stories, and she was very friendly. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. it was really cool. You know, it's, and I don't know if you've been asked this question before, so forgive me if you've answered it. If Freddie was alive today, and you love the music, obviously, mm. what would you say to the guy about his music, about him as a person? Oh, man. Well, I mean, if he were with us, I probably wouldn't be singing with the band. Sure, so that would change the circumstances, the music, right? You'd still oh, 100%. Music, right. I've always been. I, I think I would... I would ask him what his lyrics meant sometimes because yeah. some of them are, are sort of mysterious or cryptic, you know, and, and I, I right. think I'd want to know more about the songwriting process. I'd want to know what inspired some of these yeah. tunes. You yeah. Know? And I, I think that's what makes him so interesting is that he mm-hmm. didn't do a ton of press. Mm-hmm. There's not that much footage of him talking. He's sort of this kind of elusive dude, mm-hmm. you know? I love that. But these songs, they stand the test of time so much. Yeah, and you brought really up do. to life again for a whole new generation. So oh, that's very thanks. cool. Thank you. They, yeah. It's You know, like we just finished this North American tour. And yeah. what was so cool to see is that, you know, probably because of the film being so successful, right. there were like kids there, parents of that, those oh, yeah. kids, their parents. I mean, it was like all ages. Right. It was so interesting to see, uh, you know, a catalog mm-hmm. of music from that long ago. Mm-hmm. Connecting with people with so of many today. generations. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Like no. you said, your your son. You said he's eleven. Yeah, it's. I've been hearing a lot of those stories. I love that. And he's a huge fan of yours. And he's gonna be bummed that he had to go to school today, <laughs> Misty. So we'll do a little video afterwards. For sure, him, of course. I will say, my son ate a lot of Doritos that night. Contact and high. Other chips. Oh, okay. Contact high is what he's got saying. It, got it. Got it. The theater. Got it. Yes. Just well, you saying. know, rock and roll, right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> so the new single, Superpower. Uh, we love this song. I was dancing to it in the studio. I told you that before you got here. Oh, great. I mean, yeah, I, I, most people that I play it for, they start moving around, you know, and I think right. that's the sign of a fun song. So I'm very excited for everybody to hear it. Well, I mean, you have to have that. If a song gets somebody moving and they're tapping yeah. their foot or whatever and they start doing this dance that maybe they'd only do in the comfort of their own home, yeah. <laughs> you know you have a song that means something to somebody. Yeah, I love that. I actually wish I could see everybody doing the comfort of their own home dance. Val does it most days in here. Yeah. The comfort of his own sure. dance. Well, I will say Jill is a dancer. Really? Yes. And once a dancer, always a dancer. That's what that we said. I got it. Yeah. So, well, I want to see you dancing to Superpower then. Oh. There it is. See, <laughs> we put it on. Tweet me. Jill dance to it. <laughs> well, retweet you and everything. It. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll be great. <laughs> Uh, you're living in Hollywood now, are you living out here? I've lived. I've been in LA for 20 years. You have oh been for yeah. 20 years. Oh yeah, my gosh. yeah. I mean, I grew up in San Diego. Yeah. So uh, I moved to here after high school. Right. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So you a nice house in the hills. You live in the California. I do. Lifestyle. I do. It's pretty. I, I do feel very fortunate. I, yeah. I, I've worked hard, and I and I now I'm enjoying it. Are you prepared me? for an earthquake? Sorry. Oh, God. Do you know when that was all like kind of happening? I, I definitely bought some things Same. and put them. You know, some canned okay. goods mm-hmm. and some bottled water and a flashlight. And, yeah. Right. Yeah, I thought, and, and I had to like review where all the gas lines were okay. and all that yes. stuff. Yeah, that's Same. what you got to know. Do you know how to turn them off and everything? Nope. 
<laughs> but he knows where they are. I know exactly where they are. I'm gonna tell somebody that's where they are. Go turn. But them I did. Off. I did call somebody. I'm like, is there like an auto shut off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fine. Okay. You actually do. You can get an auto shut off. I think I have that. We have. They too. shut off yeah. too quick or something. I heard no. But I think you that like the problems? newer houses, it's right. sort of code, isn't it, or something? Yeah. Oh, like, is it really? Oh. Yeah. I have a wrench attached to my so I have to and turn it. <laughs> really? Yeah, literally, like the wrench yeah. is just right attached to it. So um, nice. Have you with the Earthquake supplies? Have you um? Got into them like sometimes I'm hungry and I'll go out there and I'll eat something out of the supplies. Not yet. Good for but you. You never know. Good for you. You never know. I mean, there's some there's some beans in there. That's um, no problem with uh, yeah, the, yeah. The Wait, cheeses. <laughs> the earthquake kit becomes you know munchy central. Yes. It yeah. Is. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. possible. I could see that happening. Yeah. Yeah. When you're making music, I just want to kind of know where you are in your career professionally and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you feel pressure from a label or whoever to like? Are you trying to make a hit or anything? Or are you in a comfortable spot now where you can you can just do what you want to do, what makes you happy? Because you have the fan base. You've obviously got the Queen thing going on, doing some acting and some voice work as yeah. well. Are you comfortable to just be yourself and express yeah, yourself? Yeah, you know, honestly, like the, obviously if a song catches on and it becomes mm -hmm. popular, that's great. Because this is the thing that right. I made, you know, and I want people to hear it. But I think it can, you can get caught up in trying to chase that hit. Right. Uh, if you're not careful. So with this project, I definitely kind of like changed my thought process a bit and 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 went with just what fe what what felt good, what felt authentic, what felt like this is me. Yeah. If people like it, they like it. I'm yeah. thrilled. You know, I love that you're saying this is me. This is who I am and everything. There's a lot of kids going back to school right now. And yeah. Stuff. Um, going back to your school years and everything. If you could give some kid right now listening some advice as they go back to their school year, what would you tell them? Be strong in the fact that you bring something to the table that no one else brings. Mm -hmm. I think individuality is 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 a tricky thing, especially for like a, you know a teenager. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think like as you get older, you realize like those are the things that make yeah. you special. Those are the things that make you memorable. Those are the things that people talk about. If you're just acting like everybody else, you're just right. going to blend in. What's the point? You know what's funny, and I've been struggling with this with my kid, trying to explain to him certain things matter in life and certain things don't matter in life. But it's very hard when your entire world at 11 years of age is, you know, your soccer team or something like that. I'm like, buddy, I wasn't great at sports in school. I was in the marching band and everything. And I turned it out okay. And it's great. You don't have to worry about these moments defining your life yeah. where you get that goal in soccer or you make this team or don't make that team. But it's hard to let a kid know that because the wisdom comes with ages. Yeah. And like, if it's not this thing, it's the next thing. Right. You know, like just try everything. I think, I think when we're young, we, we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Yeah. That's what we were saying. And at, just try the next thing. If that doesn't work out, try something new. You Which know? is so easy to say right now at our age. Yes, we well, like, know. When better. you were a kid in yeah. sixth grade or something like that, you probably had a certain goal or you know something in life that you really wanted. Yeah. And if you didn't get it, you felt like the world was crashing in around you. Uh, yeah. And I think I think finding that personal strength is not always easy. Right. But if you can just kind of try, that's the uh -huh. best you can do. All you can do is try. All you can do is do your best. No yeah. one's grading you on on you know you living your life. You mm -hmm. know we we I think we get really worried about people judging us, especially kids right now with like social media. Yes, everyone's looking at you, and so right. it images everything. But as long as you're just putting yourself out there and being authentic, I mean, it is easier said than done. But that's the key to keeping it going, and that's yeah. the key to happiness if you can crack it. You know. Do you have a good side to you physically? You just said, you know, everyone's looking at you. And I just thought you're walking down the street and everybody's got a camera phone and everything else. They're always trying to take your picture. Do you have a certain side that you prefer? Oh, oh, of uh of you uh, physically? I think my left side. I think. Is it your left side? I think so. I don't know. I don't really so, care. So lucky to be on the left side. Thank yeah. you for viewing me from over great. there, sir. It's yeah. Great. yeah, that's great. Yes, Thank I'm you. on the other Thank side you. right here. <laughs> so, I don't know. What do you it's think? Is it what do you no, think? I, think better. I mean, you tell me. No, you're know. great. You're great yeah, on all sides. You can leave a comment on my Instagram. Yes. When you moved out here 20 years ago, before you started making me, uh, money from from music, what were your jobs? Did you work in any oh, restaurants? Oh yeah, or anything I worked. Uh, I did a lot of retail. You so did? I, I had a job at the Beverly Center for a okay. little while. I had a job at the uh, the Hollywood and Highland. I worked yes. At, I worked at the Aveda store there. No okay. way. Yeah, yeah, and I had to give hand massages to strangers walking in the door, which was oh. not creepy at all. Um, oh gosh. And tea and things like that, and yeah. and I could sell you some moisturizer. I really could. Oh, I love yeah. it. <laughs> My skin's very dry. I would love. He knows. A, that's like, why he said that. Water. He was being very honest yeah. about Thank it. You. He kept some product. If you wanted it, no, no, that wasn't. Yeah. I need Don't it. put words yeah. in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta help me out here, Jill. <laughs> Do you have? I mean, so we talked about you know you did a little bit of acting, the voiceover, and everything else. Is there something else that is so off the radar that's kind of like a pet project of yours that people don't know about? 
I was here's the example. Yeah. I always joke about being like a park ranger or something. Is yeah. there something else for you out there? <laughs> <laughs> park That's like a really dream job, like retirement yeah. job. A dog whisperer. No, yes, exactly. Um, well, I, I, uh, this isn't like that far off, but I okay. bought a house last year, and it, it became my obsession, and I've been like decorating it. Okay. Um, instead of hiring somebody to do it, I was like, you know what? This will be more fun to do it myself. Right. And of course, that comes with a lot of uh, trial and error and some learning experiences as right. well, because you go, oh, so and so, can you? Uh, change this countertop, and then you realize that they charged you like seven times as much as they should have. But it's fine because okay. you love the countertop. Right. Yeah. So do you think you could take out Chip and Joanna? you think you could do a better job than them? Uh, like a house flipping yeah. challenge? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think later in life I might want to do yeah. that for people. I really enjoy it. Huh. That's very yeah. cool. That's yeah. cool. For sure. As like a favorite friends, you know. When we, right, right. we moved from Sherman Oaks to Studio City, my wife and I, from we upgraded our neighborhood. Yeah. And to your point... When you're in the nicer neighborhood, things cost more. People charge you more money. It is because yeah, they think opener, you have yeah. It. It's crazy. It's the minute you live in like one one zip code different. Yeah, yeah you're like, oh, what? Yeah, yeah. Well, that would be incredibly frustrating to me. How somebody in your spot and several other you know musicians and celebrities and stuff be in your spot. How people probably try and take advantage of you sometimes, not just in financial gain and stuff like that, but because of your friendship or because of your place in this world. But at the same time, to be totally fair, it's yeah. like you know. Uh, I'm so lucky. I'm so fortunate to like have what I have and and have the people in my life that I have. If I have to pay a little extra for a countertop, I'm cool. Like okay. you know, it's it's. Nice I'm not you. whining. I'm not complaining. Mm -hmm. It's just um, you know, getting what you want yeah. is is sometimes it takes a little bit more more muscle. That's very sweet of you to say that because we do have a fee to appear on the show we haven't told you about, <laughs> uh, and it's not just for you. It's for everybody. So you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> But I do feel lucky, and, yeah. and and that's why, like with this music, with Superpower, for example, mm -hmm. it, it is a fun song. It makes me makes people want to dance. But I wanted to put a message in there. I mm -hmm. really want to send positive vibes. I mm -hmm. want to send empowerment to people, uh, and and Superpower is about that. It's like, yo, if you're not um, if you're not getting treated correctly right. with respect, you have a right to demand that respect. Right. Um, you know, in a peaceful protest kind of way. Right, of course, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. With a great bass line and, you know, yeah. something to dance to. Well, that's kind of like what our show is all about. We have this positivity vibe that hopefully goes through our entire show. And we always have a feature we call, like, Happy News and stuff like yeah. that. Where people come on there and they talk about what's great in their life. So if we had you on the air on Friday and you called in and you got Happy News and you're a normal person now, it's not your music, <laughs> something that you're excited about, something that made you smile, what do you think that would be? Um, that I'm going to get to see my dog in a couple weeks, who I haven't seen because I've been away on tour. So he stays with my dad down oh. in San Diego, and I really miss him. Yeah. I love my dog. He's... You still have to wait a couple weeks? Well, because I'm throw. about to go travel a little bit more. So gotcha. and, and okay. I don't like to put the dog through too much back and forth because yeah. yeah. that's tough on an yeah. animal, but For I'm sure. so excited to see my dog. Uh, I love uh, my dog. What type of dog? He's a Chihuahua Basenji mix. Do you have a picture? Uh, yeah. Somewhere. Like super yeah. adorable? He's like about 15 pounds, so he's yeah. like a little lap dog. And he's kind of got a split personality because okay. he'll be super alpha and aggressive to like guard the house. And he kind of bulks up and he barks at people. Really? And he stands really tall. And then in a split second, he is like a princess. And he'll be <laughs> crisscross paws on the couch and kind of giving me side eye. So uh, I love that about him. How cute. <laughs> that was awesome. All right. Do you FaceTime so face when you're away? No, I don't think he gets that. No, I mean, okay. I'm, I don't know. That's I think that would be more from you know my my you know emotional support sure. than his. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> oh, there he is! Yay! Oh, so the room, the princess. Oh, he's what so cute. Babies. That's how so he got cute. his name because when I, I I rescued him from a shelter and I think his name's like Max or something. Right. And no shade to the name Max, but no. I was like, how many Max dogs are there? There's a ton of them. I needed something right. original, and he was sitting on the back of the couch, like perfectly poised and symmetrical. Like a little sphinx, uh -huh. and I was like, "You're a you're an Egyptian king. You right. feel it in a past life." Right, and he has kind of like eyeliner. He kind of looks like he's like kinda really messy. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's how we got his name. That's perfect. He's Pharaoh. There's uh, something else I wanted to ask you about here. You were talking about how sometimes you were overwhelmed by the idol fame and stuff. You had talked about that recently. Yeah, in the beginning, it was it was weird. Was it? it? Was really, yeah, because like, I mean, I you know, I luckily this yeah. all happened when I was 27, so sure. I was like a little older. I had lived in L.A for almost 10 years, which really helped. But then when everything hit, it's just, it's weird. And that was at a yeah. point where Idol was getting watched by, you know what, like 30 million people so a week. People. And it was like, there was a lot of coverage and a right. lot of hype. And I was really thrilled and really excited. But it, it, it took But it was zero to, to 60. It. Yeah. And it's like that kind of adjustment, that's not normal. Sure. Right. You know, where your whole kind of context changes. 
Do you get taken aback by anybody you meet yourself now? Any celebrities? I, I can't remember the last time I got starstruck. I think I think that's kind of worn off, but I do really like it when I meet people that are genuine, right. down to earth, really nice. I've had a couple that might not be so much that. Okay. But when I meet the ones that are, that makes me really happy, especially yeah. when they're successful because you're like, oh, you deserve it. Right. You know? I love that. Well, you deserve it too. Oh, thanks. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Thank, you so Thank you so much. Adam Lambert. Congrats. Thank you. Thanks for having me.